So let's get started. Um, yeah, yes, I, as I already said, we have a quite different approach. Um, we have a vertical installation, so it's uh, in general ground mounted, but uh, uh, due to the vertical mounting, um, we have a lot of space in between the rows and uh, nearly no impact uh, um, in the rows uh, regarding water and uh, uh, also uh, light. Uh, for the crops and uh, as you can see here on this picture it's from Dürmingen it's a two megawatt plant um, it can still be used uh, with uh, um, conventional agricultural machinery uh, in this case we have uh, 10 meters um, distance between the rows and as you see a tractor with a mowing system of nine meter fits in between and can be used there so um, yeah, what I wanted to um, uh, discuss with you and show you are um, the um, arguments we see um, for such a system. Uh, so the question, why vertical? Um, last year, I was very surprised to find a study from 2040, uh, a presentation from a uh, bifacial workshop, which exactly addressed this uh, topic with the vertical system. Um, I was very surprised since um, we thought at that time we were the only ones um, working on this topic. Uh, indeed, we were not. And uh, they had a very humoristic uh, approach uh, on addressing this topic I wanted to uh, share with you. So uh, the question, why vertical? Um, we already had in the past and uh, I think the message was uh, that, guys, uh, let's have a look to the evolution. Maybe it makes sense. Um, why it makes sense, uh, I wanted to show you from uh, different uh, aspects. We have uh, on the one hand the agricultural aspect, um, some ecological aspects, uh, the question of grid integration I always also saw in the chat uh, is I think uh, also important. Operational aspects, um, the question of cleaning we uh, already addressed. And I also wanted to show you a, a special variant of uh, uh, solar fencing system. So let's start with uh, agriculture. Um, we could imagine a lot of um, different types of usage uh, for the space between the rows. Um, conventional agriculture, um, of course, um, as well as livestock farming. Uh, but also organic farming, as we see, for example, also in the Hegelbach project, Max uh, introduced to you, and uh, also uh, some uh, alternative might also be um, ecological enhancement uh, of the uh, ground, but um, as we can see in a later part, we could also combine both together. Um, if we're talking about the um, agricultural use, the conventional agriculture, um, we already have experience with grassland, but we uh, think that, uh, for example, potatoes, um, different types of beets or carrots uh, also work with uh, such a, um, a system simply since it doesn't grow too high. Um, if we're talking about cereals and rice, um, that should also be possible, but still there are some, um, uh, we, we need to have a look how to, to implement. Since uh, the normal um, installation we have has a um, uh, um, space uh, under the rows of, uh, of about one meter. So we uh, get uh, shadowing um, from the um, crops uh, if they gr grow much higher. So for example, um, Corn doesn't make sense at all, but um, um, for uh, some kinds of cereal series it would uh, work. Um, if the crops are slightly higher, we still have to, uh, or we are able to adjust the system to make it also a little bit higher on the one end. On the other hand, you can uh, de uh, decrease the uh, space you need, uh, you take for the um, agriculture more to the middle and uh, leave some spaces on the left and the right to avoid shadowing. So there are some degrees of freedom to um, bring this uh, yeah, into productive 
cooperation between uh, agriculture and um, uh, energy production. Um, livestock farming, I will come back, uh, is also uh, um, an interesting um, approach for the system. Um, but I will come back later uh, when we're talking about uh, the fencing system. Um, if we are also looking at uh, uh, ecological aspects, uh, we see also some uh, interesting points. Uh, on the one hand, um, the modules, uh, of course, when they are arranged as in our uh, uh, main use in Germany, um, they are mounted from north to south, so uh, east-west orientation. And uh, in Germany, and I think also in uh, huge parts of India, we have a mainly west wind direction. Uh, this uh, system would also um, uh, have the function of uh, reducing the wind speed at the ground. Um, we already saw that when we construct our uh, system in Germany, we uh, can decrease uh, the size of the mounting structure and we do not need to run that deep. Um, if we get more and more in the inner part of the field and um, only in the outer parts, we need uh, stronger structures uh, to get along with uh, the wind load, which is one of our um, yeah, uh, biggest challenges. And uh, so uh, we can be sure that also the wind speed at the ground uh, is um, decreased by such a system which avoid, uh, on the one hand, erosion and uh, also should uh, lower the evaporation. Uh, we have no figures for this uh, effect so far, but uh, I think it's obvious that this um, uh, effect uh, should be there. Um, another thing is uh, that we can, uh, yeah, if we um, remember at the picture uh, in the beginning, um, the mowing system has nine meter, uh, the row spacing was uh, 10 meters. So um, we had around 90% use for this, uh, for agricultural reason. Um, and there was around 10% left um, for uh, around the modules, which uh, is not uh, possible to, to use for agriculture with machinery. So um, a quite interesting approach uh, can be to use this uh, area for some kind of flower stripes uh, and uh, to increase uh, the um, biological diversity and um, um, yeah, uh, being a habitat for uh, the fauna as well. A very important aspect uh, we see is uh, the production profile of such a system. Here we are looking at um, uh, east-west orientation, which is our main focus, but uh, also others uh, um, are quite interesting. Um, if you compare both, we have here uh, on the left-hand side uh, the profile of a um, flat-mounted uh, conventional PV system. On the other side, um, on the right hand, we have uh, this uh, vertical PV system and we see that the peaks are uh, more or less the same. That's indeed true, but uh, our system has two peaks in the morning and the evening hours, um, a quite steep increase in the morning, uh, while at noon we only have a very uh, low production. And um, it's about it depends on the ground and the reflection. Uh, we have no, uh, with the east-west orientation, we have no um, direct irradiation at noon at all, but still we see around 20% uh, of uh, energy production simply due to, due to um, reflection and the albedo effect. And um, if we are looking at this uh, production profile, I think uh, in Germany definitely, but I think also for India, it, uh, even on a standalone basis, it fits a little bit better to the electricity demand than the conventional ones. Um, even more interesting from our perspective is, of course, the combination of both. Yeah, we have here some figure from a combi combined uh, from the, the combination of two systems. Uh, these are uh, real data. Um, from I think it's uh, one or two years ago um, with two real plants we have in Germany and you see the blue line is the production curve of the vertical system. 
the red line is the production curve of the conventional and uh, the green one is a combination. And what we see, I think, is uh, uh, most interesting is that we have really a strong increase in production in the early morning hours and a quite stable production during the day until the late evening hours. Yeah? So that's uh, especially interesting for um, uh, getting along with uh, um, um, yeah, renewable energy, even to stabilize and to um, uh, fit better to the uh, electricity demand. And also for uh, construction of this, um, of such a system, maybe a combined system, uh, is also quite interesting the effect that the peak production doesn't increase as a ca in the same way as the capacity um, uh, increase. Yeah. So um, if we take, for example, uh, one megawatt of uh, conventional and one megawatt of the um, um, of the um, uh, next to sun of the uh, east-west one, um, we would have only a smaller increase in uh, peak capacity we need, for example, for the transformer station. Or to, uh, yeah, to put it uh, uh, the other way, with a given capacity of a transformer station, we could have a combined system with, uh, let's say, 20, 20, even 25% additional um, capacity at all uh, or additional um, yeah, peak uh, installation um, with the same grid. So the costs for the grid um, would be shared uh, with a, on a higher capacity of installed uh, PV. Um, I also want to uh, have a short look at this uh, operation and maintenance. Um, it was addressed several times today, and uh, we also uh, expect a positive effect of vertical uh, installation as well on this point, uh, simply due to the fact that it's vertical and the dust is not able to, um, uh, yeah, to stay on top. Um, of course, it's still, I'm quite sure in India, it still needs to be cleaned, uh, even if it's vertical. But uh, we would uh, expect um, that uh, the effort needed and also the water needed uh, to clean the system um, should be lower than uh, uh, a conventional installation. Yeah? And uh, that's also a reason why we will, are very interested to install a system like this in um, India, um, since we expect some uh, advantages uh, also at that. Uh, on that point. Last slide uh, I want to show you is uh, a special installation uh, we here uh, need use for livestock farming. In this case, it's chicken, but it was also already tested with cows and with uh, uh, horses as well, um, where we combine the vertical PV system uh, with uh, fencing. Uh, so. There is a dual use of this system. On the one end, it's a fence to, um, yeah, simply to fence uh, around the um, uh, farming. Um, and uh, on the other hand, we have the electricity production, or as a colleague always says, we have a fence who, which um, uh, um, yeah, earns money from electricity production. Um, in this case, we see that also the chicken obviously enjoys the shadow of the um, system. And um, yeah, I, we expect that uh, for livestock farming, but also in the residential area or for industrial buildings, this is a nice opportunity um, to use the fans for electricity production and uh, for um, get generating additional electricity and income as well. So, um, okay, here we, I also um, have some pictures from Germany just for so to have some impressions. Um, on the uh, right hand side, um, up you see a, a buzzer who uh, uh, obviously uh, uses it for his hunting, uh, the system. Um, left hand side, the cows with the system. Um, Right, uh, the right, lower right one is uh, maybe not that important for India, but uh, especially snowy regions uh, are very, very interesting for this uh, system uh, simply uh, due to um, 
the increase in albedo effect uh, due to the, uh, the snow yeah? and uh, then you have uh, very strong indirect irradiation combined with cold temperatures which uh, really boosts uh, electricity production we have some experiences for austria and the alps and that's really a boost for energy production yeah i wanted to finish with uh, this uh, um, yeah picture of our plant in Dürmingen, um, where you can see how it uh, yeah, fits into the um, landscape and uh, yeah of course I would be very happy to see this some uh, sort of uh, system um, in India within the next years. Thanks a lot for the um, for your attention and I'm looking forward to the discussion. <laughs>